We can't add these two things yet because they don't have common denominators. One has an x in the bottom, one has an x minus 8. Those aren't the same. And you can't subtract the same thing from the top and the bottom of a fraction or else you've unbalanced the thing. The only thing we can do is we can multiply the top and the bottom by something. So in order to get common denominators, a, a tool in a tool belt is to multiply the top and the bottom by the opposite fraction's denominator. So the bottom of the other fraction was x minus 8. So that's why I'm multiplying everything in the first fraction by x minus 8. And same thing over here. I'm going to multiply everything by x because that's the opposite fraction's denominator. So the first fraction now has an x minus 8 multiplying at the top. We made it bigger, but it's actually steering us in the right direction because now at least the denominators are in common, right? You could write this as x minus 8 times x or this is the same thing. And so now we have common denominators. Uh, we can add them together. Uh, and you can distribute the 8 in that parentheses. And then we can do some simpli simplifying over here. 8x plus the 2x makes 10x. Sorry, I ran out of room got 10x minus 64 in the top, and it's still x, parentheses, x minus 8 in the bottom. And now the top can be factored a little bit, but I don't think it's going to help us. I think this, this should be our final answer, okay? Because you could factor a 2 out of the top. I don't know if that's what my math lab is going to be looking for. But factoring the 2 doesn't make anything cancel out with the bottom, so maybe this one is the one they're going to prefer.